Welcome back to installment number three of some Scott Fishbowl uh, draft strategy. Um, so again, with our first video, we went running back, running back in our first turn. Video two, uh, Kelsey Adams. And now for video three, we're going to go quarterback heavy and kind of focus on solidifying our two starting quarterbacks first and then kind of building from there. Uh, so with this, um, again, basing off of ADP, we'll take Deshaun Watson first. Um, you know, the biggest thing with Watson is can Fuller and Cook stay healthy? If they can, losing Nuke is massive. We all get that. But healthy Fuller, healthy Cooks, and then, you know, some of their other guys in their stable should make up enough for Watson to still be a really good, strong fantasy player. Next up, you have Russell Wilson. Oh, Kyler. Oh, Russell Wilson. Um, love Russ. Uh, amazing, amazing player. Um, amazingly efficient passer. The biggest thing to keep in mind for Russ Wilson and the scoring is his sack numbers. He takes a lot of sacks because their O line is meh, pretty mediocre. Um, so that's something that could kind of really come back to uh, negate some of his strengths as a actual NFL player. Um, he ends up taking a lot of sacks just because of that offensive line, which will hurt you in this scoring format. Um, but I think everything else he does so well, um, don't be afraid of Russell Wilson for that reason. Uh, so now, quarterbacks are set. I can really ignore that position for several rounds and get my third, maybe a fourth guy late, but Watson, Wilson, I'm set. So now I need to look at where are my options. <sighs> Fantasy darling, rookie draft darling, right? Taken over Jonathan Taylor in several, you know, actually in a lot of places. Um, not by me, but here nor there. Um, I'm unsure. I think with shortened camps, and you know, actually, I, I was in a discussion with someone the other day, and they shared uh, that like Kansas City was in the bottom five for running backs use in pass catching or pass protection, um, which is huge for someone like Clyde because he cannot really pass protect. Um, but I still think Damian Williams is going to be around enough where it won't be at least until the second half of the season for uh, Clyde to really take off. And in fantasy, that's fine as long as you can get to that point. I'm, I'm just not sold. So for that, that means I'd rather solidify some other positions. So now that leaves me with tight ends or wide receivers. And thinking about those two positions, you have the elite tight ends, and then a whole ocean of who knows what, where you have the elite wide receivers, then a massive ocean of still really, really strong value. So in that sense, I'm going to have some fun with this. Take Mark Andrews, and hopefully we will double down again now go with Zach Ertz. Um, with no Hurst there, you're looking for Andrews to, to get a few more snaps. He was already oh, crazy efficient. You gotta hope that maybe he keeps that efficiency or an increased volume kind of offsets losing that efficiency. And Zach Ertz, Zach Ertz, especially, he's good. He's really, really good. And you still have to think his top competition is, and I love Rager, Berkey wide receiver. Alshon Jeffrey, who I'm not even sure is healthy yet. Deshaun Jackson, who is the deep threat specialist who gets injured quite often. Dallas Goddard, who's very, very good and athletic in his own right, but he's still behind Ertz. And then Sanders. So Ertz really still is the top dog in that offense, and we know Wentz loves to throw to him. So don't be afraid of Ertz, especially in this redraft format. Um, very good player and again now i solidified my quarterbacks solidified my tight ends now i can really go to town on getting as much running back value as that i can find and 
again, wide receivers are so deep. I can I can really crush a lot of wide receivers right here and fill in some of these other roles. So looking at who I have. All right. Cooper, Brown, Cup, David Johnson, David Montgomery, Mark Ingram, Swift. Okay. And then just for ha -has, yeah, we're not looking too hot here. So looking at this Dobbins again, so we're in this Kareem Hunt idea. I should do like Kareem Hunt. Um, I'm a little worried that they may not run enough two running back sets, but that's okay. And I don't know how much he's going to be really playing over um, Chubb. So realistically with this is I don't want to reach too, too much. Um, and frankly, I'd rather try to solidify a really high-end wide receiver based on the draft board that's in front of me. So with that, you have someone like Amari Cooper, which I'm, you know, I'm sorry, Tommy. Um, fantasy locusts, I, I agree. Uh, Cooper, you know, is that roller coaster ride. Um, you just gotta hope with the second year in the system, second year with Dak, uh, he keeps those peaks, but those valleys just are a little bit higher. Um, so I'm gonna go with Amari Cooper here. And depending on the turn, I'm the 12. Okay, well, that stinks. I was gonna go with David Johnson, but. It is what it is. So for now, at this point, you can easily go back to the well with A.J. Brown. Uh, again, Calvin Ridley, who we took in our previous draft, is, you know, I'm a big fan. I think he's going to be great this year. Um, Keenan Allen, always kind of underappreciated guy. Even with Rivers leaving, I think Tyrod Taylor, um, maybe Herbert eventually, but at least Taylor for this year, I, I think. Keenan, Keenan is arguably the best route runner in the NFL. So he's going to get open. He's going to get looks. He'll be good. Um, Cortland Sutton. Again, there's a lot of guys. Jimmy G, if I wanted to solidify a third quarterback, right? There's a lot of different options I can still go here. Um, but, right, with the running back starting to run low, a little nervous about it. Um, Ingram is really good. I think he will be good for this year, but I do think Dobbins, Dobbins is way too talented to also not play. So with that, going to go with Monty. I'm a believer. I think this year he's going to show a little bit better quickness, better ability to just one cut go, hit the hole, a um, little better hip mobility. I think he's going to be really good. Um, I think he can kind of change some minds based off of the rookie hype and then not really living up to those expectations. So I'm going to go with David Montgomery. And again, you know, you have to just keep in mind, what are you drafting, you know, player-wise? Watson and Wilson, two elite quarterbacks, should always be leading my team. Mari Cooper is a volatile guy, but his booms are massive, and he can win you weeks all by himself. Andrews and Ertz, again, two really leading players that are borderline wide receiver ones in their own right based off of, you know, the, the TE premium aspect. So when you have all of that in your mind, I don't, I don't need David Montgomery to be, you know, a running back 12 or running back a top 10 or... You know, if he can be a, in, in that late teen range and can just be consistent, like 14-ish points, I'm set. That's all I need. That's all I need with my other positions kind of bringing up the slack in that sense. All right. So with all of that said, I'm really not in a bad spot here. Um, I still have Baker, Burrow. Rivers, Gardner. So I have a lot of quarterback options that I can still go with to solidify that third starter. Um, I, I do think that's very important. Obviously, bye week, stuff like that, but just you need, you need at least three viable starters. Um, so I can go that route very easily. Again, I could build in a running back. Tyler Lockett. I really like DK Metcalf. I was surprised I was not a 
the biggest proponent. I wasn't like super negative about him coming in last year, but I I definitely joked about the cone drill. We all did. Um, but he's good. There's no doubting that. But Tyler Lockett isn't going away either. So Lockett's good. Uh, you know, Terry McLaurin should already showed a ton as a rookie. You think Haskins is, is getting better. That only helps McLaurin. And frankly, other pieces in Washington, if they take a little bit of a step forward too, I think that only helps Terry because that way he's not getting totally uh, kind of skewed in on by defenses. So really good option there as well. Um, but knowing me, knowing how I like to draft, well, I want another running back to at least start to build into that role. So I'm going to take or the dice roll that Darius Geis finally stays healthy. Now, if he can, you got to remember, coming out of college, Geis was extremely, extremely popular. Um, there was a lot of hype with Geis. Obviously, his health has really zapped all of that from him. But if he can be healthy, uh, you know, he and Barkley were, were very much talked about together. Um, and obviously, Barkley has killed it. And that's kind of where Geis was, but injuries have taken it away. So you got to hope in a situation like this, maybe this is the finally the year that he can be healthy, that his knees can, can keep up with everything, and that he can crush it. And now, let's see, just to see quarterbacks late. Ah, Joe Burrow. My only concern with Burrow is prior to this season, where was Burrow on people's rankings? Now, he had an all-time season, like one of the best ever, really legitimately the best ever. Um... But in, in Dynasty, yes, obviously scoop him up immediately. Redraft, I'd wait. See what he can actually do. Um, so, I kind of want to go Gardner, but after everything I just said about Joe, Gardner seems like I'm saying the same thing. Um, so we're going to go with Terry McLaurin. Um, he showed a lot as a rookie, and I think he'll be kind of fun to watch and should have some good growth. Um, it's really nothing against Tyler Lockett. I easily could have gone with that Russell Wilson stack. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. I never do it intentionally. Um, but sometimes it is nice to kind of uh, diversify your, your players so you don't have a ton of overlap between teammates and they're not all tied together in that sense too. Right, so it looks like we will get in one more turn here. Trying every every video trying to keep under 15 minutes, uh, short, sweet, to the point. You guys don't care about you know who's getting taken in the the 18th round. It doesn't. Those are your yours can be your own sleepers. It doesn't matter too much. Um, but as a starting lineup, oh, there's Gardner gone, Burrow gone, Rivers gone. Okay, cool. So. Here we are. Henry, I like, but no Rivers. Rivers loves to throw to tight end, so I don't know what that becomes for Henry. Uh, now with Taylor there. Higby, again, I'm not sold. He has a lot of good, uh, you know, some good profiles, but at the same time, a little bit of a flash in the pan possible situation, so. I'm not sold. So what I will do here is I'm going to pick up my third wide receiver in Hollywood Brown. I think I've taken in in another in a previous one of these videos as well. Um, I think he has a lot going for him as someone that can vastly outproduce his ADP. And let's see, for our last one, I'm going to take Sony Michelle. Now. I don't think he is going to totally, you know, be a wide uh, running back one, but I think he's going to get a good enough volume and touchdowns to make him a very viable flex player. All right, so there's a roster, a starting roster, looking at going at quarterback, quarterback first. It's not too bad. All right, have a good day.